Hi everyone, uh, it's Doug. I want to thank you for uh, joining us to do uh, go over the end of year survey talk that we have here. Uh, we're going to list ten top things that we learned about the survey that we uh, finished uh, toward the beginning of the year. Very good results uh, that we had, and, and a lot of good feedback. And we'll go over a few things that we learned from that here. A little bit about myself. I'm Douglas DeMaio. I do the PR and marketing for the Open Sousa project. Um, I also help to, to run the conference that we're enjoying this weekend. So uh, we hope, hope you have a good time. Uh, I'll be doing this talk with Adrian. And I'm Adrian. I've been around with Open Sousa for about one year, I would say. Um, my background is in the academia. Um, and in Open Sousa, I'm mostly busy writing the docs and trying to coordinate on um, contents um, and yeah I came up with the idea of um, organizing a survey to yeah to better understand the community last autumn and I was lucky enough to to meet uh, Doug uh, who seemed to appreciate the idea. Here's the agenda for today um, we've already gone over some things about ourselves so why do we want community-wide surveys? Well, easy, because we want to connect offer and demand. That's the first goal. We want to make sure um, that developers, package maintainers do not work for nothing. Uh, we want to make sure that what they do is appreciated. And on the other hand, we want to make sure that the users get what they want and get their feedback um, across. The, the second reason is we want to make contribution opportunities more visible. So we are a big community with a lot of interrelated parts, a lot of sub-projects, groups, etc. And we want to make sure that um, people um, onboarding um, can find easily the, the, the best areas where their contribution would be valued. Um, the third reason is positioning. Um, that is more um, tied to the promotional aspect of the distribution in the project. But the idea is that it's not always easy for people to identify exactly why they would need um, an open source distribution. Um, and it's difficult to get past the slogan uh, like uh, Leap is a better Ubuntu or Tumbleweed is a safer Arc um, even though there's a grain of truth in that um, it's not a message that uh, speaks to everyone and also it's a message that we want to perhaps um, enrich with more concrete um, advantages and the fourth reason is of course it's fun to make surveys you make the survey, you work with people, uh, you have meetings, and then you design the survey, and then you release it, and you talk about it uh, later, and it's a nice occasion to to meet and greet. Uh, last year, for example, it was quite uh, nicely coupled with um, uh, the elections, so as long as the two things do not, I mean, as long as they play nice with one another, um, it's it's really fun and it's really something that uh, you can people can look forward to. And if you don't believe me when I tell you, we are a big community of many interrelated parts. Um, I'll ask you to just take a take a quick look at this um, beautiful graph <laughs> I've prepared uh, some months ago for something totally unrelated, but. It was nice um, to be able to re to recycle it here, um, and yeah. So, if you look perhaps just at the right hand hand side branch, which is labeled um, Open Source as Contribution Centers, you see that we have a lot of um, places where people can potentially find. Um, opportunities for contributing. We have the distributions per se, um, Tumbleweed, Micro OS, Leap, the packages, the security team, maintenance and delivery. 
Um, you have people working on virtualization. You have the heroes working on the infrastructure. Um, and you have other um, sister projects such as Oyuni, Yast, and Kiwi. Um, all the people working on the contents, uh, transla translators, um, technical documentation writers, um, people doing promotion in the news. Uh, and you have also, the, of course, the governance aspect. So, yeah, a very buzzing nest. So even though this picture is beautiful and nice, um, it means certain challenges that we have to be um, up to. Um, and the first challenge, uh, as far as connecting offer and demand on that picture, is that you have many, many different things, and these things change, and they change often and especially, and have been changing um, a lot recently. So, and this is mostly about tumbleweed. Um, most significant and frequent changes are um, about the desktop environments. So the Plasma workspace um, is is a volcano. It's shipping many many releases um, in 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 very short time windows. Um, we have also changes that are a bit more calm, but still they are very significant for users in the language uh, stacks such as Node, Python. Um, you have changes in the defaults um, of the distributions and you have also um, more minor changes in the Yoast 2, especially as an installer. Um, and uh, the recent changes, for instance, um, that you all, all have in mind would be um, the jump from from leap 15.22.3, um, the change, the upgrade to the GCC compiler, the user merge, um, and the adoption of, of Pipewire as uh, the main OGO pipe um, in, um, in Tumbleweed. And these things, uh, I can't stress this en enough, these things are very, a very significant change. They change the way people use their software, they change the dependencies of their software, uh, they change um, the buttons that they have to click in their interface. So the takeaway from this is that it begs for a harmonious two-way communication between developers, packagers and users to make sure that these changes um, are more benefiting than, than harmful. So. The expression harmony through fairness is something that's dear to my heart. Um, perhaps it's it's a little bit overdone and philosophical, but who cares? Um, I think there's a grain of truth uh, that is worth capturing here. Um, so, in a nutshell, the idea is like this. Uh, someone said, I want to tell you who, OpenSUSE is a duocracy uh, in the sense that uh, doing things um, gives you power and, and makes you um, exert power. And the answer to this that immediately comes to mind is, sure, but who's to decide what changes happen? Um, and the idea is that a duocracy works when upstream, the developers, is considerate with downstream, the end users, and vice versa. Uh, and when the the end users reward the developers with constructive feedback, um, actionable preferences, bug reports, contribution. Um, so this is the idea is that there is you need we need to have a balance in power, and the balance can only be achieved um, if we give the users the means um, to express themselves in a way that is action actionable. And that's the idea of a survey. So the takeaway of the last survey, I would say, is knowledge transfer and external visibility, that is visibility from outside 
our own ecos ecosystem are lacking. Um, in other words, if we take the survey at face value, we have to acknowledge divide. Many users are experienced with either Linux or open source distributions, but as as almost as many users struggle uh, with the basics. So a, f a natural fix would be work on knowledge transfer uh, through support, documentation, sprint sessions, uh, mentorship, um, and ideally the way we would do this would be uh, a way that builds on knowledge that people might already have from other operating systems since many of them are switches. So that's that's one thing and the, the second thing is promotion is lacking in the sense that OpenSUSE is not perceived well enough outside of its own ecosystem and here again the fix is the fact that we organize a survey gives us some visibility because people are interested in it, they take part in it, they talk about it and it echoes back to the to the big cave that is uh, the internet and it gets us um, some attention and some awareness. So you might think okay but if, if that's true we we need to collect these data and to funnel it back to the to the package maintainers and developers. Um, why don't we just use the platforms we have? We have so many platforms. Why don't we take advantage of them? And that's part of the problem. We have so many of them that it's quite fragmented. And not only that, but also um, the the way people um, visit the platforms is not really helpful for collecting uh, actionable data. Um, what I mean by this is that, okay, if you if you look at this graph, um, the mailing list and the and matrix um, are the m main centers that attract um, producers, people that that make or ship software. Uh, while most of the users, especially the new users and the prospective users, that is, the users who have not yet installed an open source distribution but are intending or are interested in doing so, are not at all on the mailing lists or on Matrix. Uh, they are on Discord, they are on Telegram, they are on Reddit. Um, so there is like this it's a symmetry between where people looking for information are and um, where people who have this information are um, and that's a gap we want to to be able to bridge with um, with the survey it is time for the top 10 so we're going to install install results and um, ask zipper to uh, echo the top 10 so number 10 majority were unaware of OpenSUSE on mobile Number nine, the issue of perception, uh, no longer running promotional uh, visibility, as mentioned earlier. Number eight, the majority of users were working in, as IT professionals. Uh, number seven, the survey time frame needed to expand, uh, which we plan on doing in the next uh, release of the next uh, survey. Uh, number six, a large majority of the users were using Plasma. Um, and that was it. That was a significantly large amount. Uh, number five, uh, two main groups were experienced in new newcomers. Number four, knowledge transfer is an area we need to focus on. Number three, uh, people are extremely interested in the survey results. Uh, that that you know there was a lot of good feedback and a lot of interest that we saw. Uh, number two. Uh, we need better handling of our questions, which we pointed out. Number one, uh, fighting the OpenSUSE identity crisis. Uh, so doing that to plan for the next survey. So again. And the takeaway from these graphs is that we have mostly switchers that make up the bulk of the community. Um, people that have been trying other Linux distributions as well as Windows. Um, and and these experienced people um, 
can be broken down into two groups the really experienced people uh, people that have 10 years of experience under their belt uh, that would be the left darkish side um, of the of the round graph at the bottom right um, and on the other on the other hand you have uh, less experienced people um, accounting for uh, a significant yet a minority of all the all the users um, and we will see that it's not trivial to accommodate these um, these two groups so what's interesting here is that even though we have a significant portion of our users um, who are experienced in Linux um, almost half of them do not have either um, a university degree or are, wo are working in IT. Um, that rules out the typical profile of being a DevOps or being a sysadmin. Um, and I think it's not pushing it to say that it reflects on the fact that people um, still struggle with the basics. And that's definitely our fault and we have to improve on that. And the basics um, being in that case documentation, installing software, uh, finding software, etc. The, the three big um, spikes um, that occur on this on this graph. So probably one thing we need to do is um, while while building on the experience and knowledge of people who have, um, skills in IT or in Linux, we also have to make sure that the there's no um, there's no threshold that is too too high to cross for less experienced people. So to wrap up with the, this question of profiling your typical open source user, who is then not just a DevOps or a sysadmin. Um, again, there is this narrative that um, onboarding is difficult, and that's that's the takeaway from from this slide. Onboarding is difficult in the sense that if you look at the left hand side uh, graph, uh, documentation is found um, difficult um, to search and to find. So. Uh, there's definitely something we can improve on here. Um, and as for the left-hand side graph, um, people find it difficult to acquire more uh, responsibilities. So things work more or less, but it's difficult pe for people to to scale um, and to to contribute to um, a more significant a more significant level. Um, and 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 to to bring uh, their experience further, um, and also another theme that we will um, talk a bit more about later is that people are, are aware that open source is not talked about sufficiently um, by the the influencers. It's not promoted and mentioned, and um, it's not present enough. On the on the on the scene, um, on the on the different different social platforms, and and the broadcasts made by different influencers. So that's another thing, um, along with uh, onboarding that we can work on. So the takeaway of the last survey, I would say, is knowledge transfer and external visibility that is visibility from outside our own ecos ecosystem are lacking um, in other words if we take the survey at face value we have to acknowledge divide many users are experienced with either linux or open source distributions but as as almost as many users struggle uh, with the basics so a, f a natural fix would be work on knowledge transfer uh, through support, documentation, 
sprint sessions, uh, mentorship. Um, and ideally, the way we would do this would be uh, a way that builds on knowledge that people might already have from other operating systems, since many of them are switches. So that's that's one thing. And the, the second thing is promotion is lacking in the sense that OpenSUSE is not perceived well enough outside of its own ecosystem. And here again the fix is the fact that we organize a survey gives us some visibility because people are interested in it, they take part in it, they talk about it, and it echoes back to the to the big cave that is uh, the internet and it gets us um, some attention and some awareness. So even though we learn quite a lot from the survey um, we have to be humble and to acknowledge that one thing we did learn is that we didn't learn enough. Uh, we need to take the survey with a grain of salt. Uh, for instance many lingu linguistic groups are probably underrepresented in our numbers um, that is easily verifiable if you if you browse um, the Telegram uh, groups, which are not which don't use English as their main language, um, that applies also to. I mean, if you if you do a, a Google search, you will find that um, you have many people interested in OpenSUSE and, and using OpenSUSE um, from Southern America, um, from uh, Eastern Asia, and these do not really show up in our numbers. Also, we have to acknowledge that data collection was a bit lacking. Uh, we didn't have formal validation, uh, which led to incomplete or noisy results. Um, for instance, um, we couldn't really detect if someone had like, missed um, uh, completing an option or if it was done on purpose, etc., etc. Um, so so it was it was it polluted our results quite uh, quite a bit and finally our data analysis was not really thorough um we didn't do an analysis of covariance we didn't do clusterization that means we were not able to break down for instance the property uh, of having difficulties doing x um into groups that would be characterized by different levels of experience. So we didn't know if doing X was more or less difficult for people who had 5, 10, 15 years of experience. And also, um, as far as data analysis is concerned, we didn't have a really easy way to process open questions. Um, that's something... The other, th the other things probably can be mitigated if not um, if not fixed using um, the software we're using um, but uh, processing open question is a little bit more tricky um, so just to to be clear open questions is when you just ask people uh, write something uh, give give me some input in that text field and like suggestions, etc., etc., or what would you do if, or um, what would you recommend or su suggest, or tell us about um, tell us about your life, basically. And that's difficult because um, it shifts the burden towards um, doing text-based research, and it's a different um, set of tools that and methods that are required here. So. It's complex, and we're not sure we are really able to 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 do this right now. So, what can you expect for next year? Because we all agreed we would be doing this every single year. Um, basically, we want to involve developers. We want to equalize participation, and we want to improve data collection. So the first thing, um, involving developers, um, we want to make sure that they have their say in designing the survey. Why? Because we want them to be able to probe interest or get
get feedback about packages, configurations, or settings. For instance, should we should we ship um, Pipewire by default instead of uh, Pulse Audio? Let's ask the people beforehand, if possible. If not, after the release has been done, so that we can know if problematic use cases have emerged. So that's one thing. Another thing is we want the word of mouth to spread across all the user groups so as to secure a more equal participation. Um, we want nobody left behind. We want everyone to have their say in the survey. Um, just because English is not your main language, we don't want you to learn about it later than others or have misconceptions or thing that um, it's not worth taking because you can't affect the course of events etc. We really want to make sure that everyone is on the same page and uh, have a shot at, at that. And finally we want to be able to better um, discern problematic cases and extract actionable information for potential users and potential contributors. That is, we want to lower the um, barrier of entry for people who are interested in open source distributions but are a bit reluctant to um, to dip a toe um, and likewise for contributors I mean I work a lot with the documentation team and we have a lot of people that ask information and then they find out that they have to like produce this information themselves because it's not here it's not um, here yet uh, and we want to make sure that these people uh, can be helped and can be support supported so that they in uh, they become um, maintainers and, and, and contributors themselves so time to wrap up so harmony through fairness demands that we minimize and mitigate frictions by evolving users in decisions and by trying to meet their needs. It also demands that we give users heads up before changes and that we facilitate knowledge transfer to make them more resilient to breakages and to help them contribute. And that's something that the end of the year surveys um, are, very, are very useful for because they identify needs um, areas of friction and opportunities for improvements both before and after a change and as a bonus um, they get us talked about by influencers um, you have Neil Gampa invited to um, uh, this week in Linux you have uh, Gerhard Pfeiffer uh, invited uh, to um, a Linux broadcast um, to talk about things. Pe people from the community are asked questions about us, about the survey, uh, about what we intend to do with information and that in itself um, is a plus for the community because it improves visibility and also it like it, it, it shows that we care uh, about the users and, and about the people uh, that make up the community. So in a nutshell, I would say um, the surveys are a good thing because they really empower people um, and they make the duocracy we were talking about earlier um, worth living in. So I do want to thank you for joining Adrian and myself for the uh, this talk on the top 10 and uh, the end of the year survey. So wish you all a great uh, OpenSUSE conference and uh, enjoy.